more than 50 years, Interstate 95 has been one of the busiest highways in the U.S. The stretch of I-95 through Richmond now carries tens of thousands of vehicles each day. Over time, that traffic volume creates stress, especially on the bridges along the I-95 Richmond corridor. These bridges were built in 1957 as part of the Richmond-Petersburg Turnpike. Uh, they were adopted into the interstate system. They've been uh, carrying increasing volumes of traffic since they were built, including larger percentages of trucks and uh, much heavier volumes than the, they were originally intended to carry. Uh, I-95 is the most traveled corridor in the United States. It carries about 72,000 vehicles a day, and on a high volume day, it can carry up to 300,000 vehicles. It carries a lot of freight through this corridor. Approximately 10,000 trucks travel through this corridor on a daily basis. So that just demonstrates the importance of the corridor to our nation, and also the importance of the work that the Virginia Department of Transportation is undertaking. Bridge restoration along I-95 actually began in the late 90s with the James River Bridge in downtown Richmond. Routine maintenance and safety inspections have extended the life of the 11 remaining bridges from Lombardy just north of exit 76 to Upham Brook near exit 82. But the time has come for a more permanent solution, one that will help these bridges last another 50 years or more. Basically, restoring these bridges consists of two uh, elements. Repairing the substructure. The substructure is basically the bridge's foundation, all the concrete elements that support the bridge, and then replacing the superstructure. The superstructure consists of the, the bridge's beams and the driving surface. This four-year project to restore the Richmond area bridges on I-95 will cost an estimated $106 million, most of which will be paid for using federal funds. To minimize driver delays, most of the construction on the surface of each bridge will be done during off-peak overnight hours and weekends. Our main goal is to minimize disruption to traffic during the weekday from the hours of 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, by, by working at night and on some weekends, we'll uh, ensure that the public uh, has minimal disruptions while traveling through this corridor. Lane closures are scheduled during off-peak overnight hours and weekends. At least one lane will remain open in each direction on the bridge while crews work on the other lanes. An additional lane will be open for emergency vehicles. Because the new bridge sections are manufactured off-site and ready to install at the time of placement, all lanes can be reopened to traffic by 6 the following morning, Monday through Friday. Federal Highway has an initiative, Every Day Count, that incorporates the use of prefabricated bridge elements to expedite the delivery of projects in the construction of bridges nationwide. Virginia is one of the leaders nationwide. This project does raise special issues. Work crews are working in close proximity with the traveling public. To lessen their exposure to unsafe working conditions, VDOT is using enhanced highway patrol protection in construction zones. That will reduce incidents and improve the movement of traffic overall. Our traffic control patterns are set up with a significant amount of state police. So we advise that the public slow down, avoid distractions, in other words, pay attention, and be courteous. On those nights and weekends when bridge segments are replaced, a crane will be placed at each end of the bridge. A segment of the span will then be cut and lifted out, placed on a truck, and hauled away. A new segment will then be brought in and placed in the gap. In most cases, the entire process from lane closure to sealing the new segment and reopening the closed lanes will take place after weekday commute hours, Monday through Friday, between 8 p.m. and 6 a.m. Corrosion prevention technology will be used to protect against rust and reduce the need for costly maintenance. New materials, innovative materials in these processes will reduce the need for maintenance, will reduce corrosion, and will reduce congestion along the length of these bridges in the Richmond area. As the bridges are restored, VDOT's Richmond Traffic Operations Center will be monitoring every stretch of highway day and night to make sure traffic flows smoothly. Operators can alert drivers about real-time traffic conditions. Operators here, when they see a problem, will put, post messages on variable message signs. They may post a message on our highway advisory radio. 
They also will post messages to a computer system which will push that information to 511. So when motorists call 511, that information will be readily available to them. VDOT is helping drivers avoid travel delays using a variety of methods. Electronic message boards will be used in advance of the work zone to inform motorists of changing traffic conditions, as well as pending construction and future lane closures. VDOT's website is another low-cost way of sharing project updates and construction information. Virginia's 511 system enables travelers to find out where the trouble spots are via phone or the 511virginia.org website. There are also 511 Twitter feeds for the I-95 corridor and Richmond region, and assistance from local broadcasters to alert drivers to road work and possible delays. When access to the internet is not available, motorists can call VDOT's Customer Service Center toll-free at 800-4-ROAD. That's 800-F-O-R-R-O-A-D. These are all ways VDOT keeps everyone informed and especially moving. What's really important is for VDOT to engage with people and listen to their conversations and, and actually respond to them when they have questions about you know, what is this going to do for my travel? Am I going to be able to get from point A to point B during the time that I would normally get there? Um, am I going to run into any problems along the way? Could I possibly have a detour? All of those things need to be communicated to people ahead of time. And then if there's any um, questions that they have about it, we need to hear those and be able to respond as well. Not only will these bridge replacements result in a safer and more positive driving experience, they will also add to Metro Richmond's economic vitality. The first way is during the construction period. And during that period, you have more workers in the area and those workers are spending their incomes in the area. The second way is by after the construction is finished, you have decreased costs in terms of maintenance and you have time efficiencies and other um, benefits to the residents of the area. And then the third, is harder to define in terms of quantitatively, but it makes the region friendlier in terms of having a road that's easier to travel. The Commonwealth of Virginia needs 95. 95 is really the main street of the East Coast of the United States. It's the main street of Virginia as well. You look at the connection between our urban corridors, between Northern Virginia here in Richmond, and also going further south and to the east. I mean, this is a vital highway that moves a lot of people. It also moves a lot of freight. And also, uh, here in, in Richmond, it actually moves a lot of commuters each and every day. So it's a vital corridor. We need to do this work. And in the long term, it's going to be a very, very positive impact to the people here in Richmond. The I-95 Richmond Bridge restorations will be completed using techniques to limit traffic and community disruptions and control agency costs. VDOT's goal is to maintain the integrity of this critical East Coast Highway so drivers can continue to enjoy safe and reliable travel.